Hi, I'm Dr. Jeffrey LeBenger. At Summit Medical Group, we believe that all citizens need to be informed about the important healthcare issues that affect their lives. That's why we're very proud to support important programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, founded by the Jewish community. Seton Hall University, where leaders learn. Suez, ready for the resource revolution. Summit Medical Group, choose New Jersey. Our mission is attracting companies to the Garden State. Verizon, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato, and uh, I am honored to welcome two very special uh, medical professionals who are joining us to talk about uh, uh, oral health, dental health, and our veterans. Dr. Jean Napoliello is president of Delta Dental of New Jersey Foundation, and Dr. Sam Joachim is chief dental officer of Zufall Health. Zufall Health is? It's a community health center uh, based out of uh, Dover, New Jersey, but we have sites all throughout um, northern Jersey and central Jersey, and we provide both medical, dental, as well as uh, behavioral health services and uh, a wide range of supportive services to our patients. Right. And, and Doctor, help us understand this. The Delta Dental mm -hmm. uh, Foundation is? A charitable entity that serves the public in New Jersey. Anybody with a bona fide charitable need can go to mm -hmm. any one of a number of clinics statewide, one of which is the Zufall right. Center. They've been our partners for 25 years, and they've grown with us. And uh, that's what people can do. So let's talk about this. Missions of Mercy. What is Missions of Mercy? Well, Mission of Mercy is a national movement. There's a national entity that controls all the Mission of Mercies and works with them. Uh, in this case, uh, I've been to Connecticut's Mission of Mercy. It's a large mass unit that's in a big arena. It's plumbed, electricity, and hundreds of professionals treating Anybody who wants to come, they, these people sleep mm. at night online and it wraps around to the get building. Dental health. To get dental care, right. And by the way, dental, Delta, Delta Dental of New Jersey does in fact support them and have been for the past eight years or so. Who are the people who are coming in for help? What Co kinds of people are we talking about here? Well, up in Connecticut, it's everybody. They come from all over. Uh, people who don't have insurance, basically. Uh, the, under, the insured and the uninsured, but mostly the uninsured. But they came to New Jersey when? So this is our first uh, No, event. but Jersey is going to be the first time. Jersey's we're, the first. This right. is the first time we're doing it here, and we're going to do it for veterans. We've had an eight-year experience with Connecticut. Talk about the veterans needs. So the, for the inaugural event, uh, we decided to focus on uh, veterans because veterans, um, you know, once discharged from service, they do get medical care, but they do not... Um, receive dental care unless they have 100% um, service-related disability. Sure. So most veterans don't get dental care, and as you know, dental care is important because it's related to overall health. Explain it to folks. We, we've had discussions before about overall uh, dental health, but if in fact a veteran comes back, he or she comes back, and they do not get the dental, the oral health they, care they need, what else could happen? Well, we know for sure that there's strong um, evidence that oral health is related to cardiovascular health, and our uh, data consistently shows that people who receive dental care have much better chronic disease outcomes than those who don't receive dental care. Right. So if you're, if you're a diabetic patient, if you're, you have high blood pressure, other chronic disease, if you're not getting regular dental care, we know that you're going to have poorer health outcomes. Right. We don't know exactly the mechanism in many cases, but we definitely know Nothing that good happens. Right. This, new, this inaugural initiative, Doctor, is called Smiles for Our Heroes, right? Right. These and are, how are we getting veterans to, again, we're announcing it here, we're talking about it right here, um, but, but how do we get reach out for veterans right now? Well, Zufall is doing it locally, mostly in the northern part of the state. Since this is our first time, we want to keep it small. We're getting our feet wet. So this is, the, this is how we want to approach it. There are going to be up to 200 appointments, slots, that 
uh, veterans schedule slots at schedule Dover slots have? at Dover, right? Plus the Dover the Dover base. Zoo, yeah, their right. their clinical site. Plus they have a van right. where we have two chairs on the van. Okay. So we're a major sponsor, Delta Dental of New Jersey. We're sorry, I've seen some of the pictures right now, but okay. So, so these these veterans are going to come in. Yes. What's going to happen for them? Well, they're going to get the basic care that they that they need: uh, radiographs, X-rays, cleanings. E exams, extractions, and simple removable dentures. Some of these people don't smile, so that's what it's going to be. Smiles for veterans. So let me ask you a question. While they're serving, because we've been doing this series that has talked about services that are out there. First of all, mm -hmm. what do veterans need? Where are the services for veterans to find those uh, services? And we're putting up website information throughout this program. You'll, you'll pick it up and use it. Mm -hmm. but, but, but here's what I'm curious about. Um, well, these men and women are serving, are they getting dental care? Yes, so they, they do get dental care uh, before, deployment, before deployment as well. So uh, about 40% of recruits entering into the uh, military have at least three or more caries, cavities. Hold on, say the number again. So 40% of uh, recruits have three or more cavities entering right. into the... So you could say it's a national security problem because if they're not ready for deployment, they're not ready, they have to get their dental work um, you know, ahead of uh, uh, you know, being able to deploy. So okay. they do get their care, they do get their care while they're in... Um, you but know, when they're coming home, they're, they're not thinking about this? I'm not saying I shouldn't say across the board. What is happening for them? Because they've got to deal with getting a job. A, how, a house to live in. Right. Uh, they got where no dental it? home. They come back out of the home that they had in the service. They don't have a dental home. There's no connection. No dental home. home. Right. No place to say, hey, this is where I'm going to get my dental. Exactly. Care. That's so interesting. You would think about all the needs that veterans have. This is huge because people say, oh, so it's your teeth. No big deal. A huge deal. Can't get a job without teeth. In many cases, many of the veterans who are missing, you know, front teeth cannot get. Jump back in, doctor. So even if the period, even if the decay is taken care of, let's say in the service, they're still subject to periodontal disease. That continues on and on. In fact, it's more prominent in the later years. So here they come back, and they're uh, they're absent any continue. The the key sure. here is continuing care. So, so go back for a second. This Missions of Mercy initiative coming over here to New Jersey, mm. the Smiles for Our Heroes is an event, an important event, but this is going to be an ongoing effort. Ongoing. Describe At, it, Doctor. Well, because we have funded the clinic uh, so that they're going to screen these patients before we treat them on Veterans Weekend. Okay. Then we're going to follow up. There's enough money for them to get follow-up care so we can have the continuity. If you just do a one- or two-day thing, no good. There has to... We want them to have their home. How do they continue to get that care? Through the clinical sites that they have. So Talk about that, Dr. So, uh, you know, being community health center, we, we um, see patients. We provide uh, affordable pricing for uh, patients who need us in is the community. Is it based on the ability to pay? Um, it is, to, to some extent. And uh, what Delta has done is... They're uh, subsidizing. They're subsidizing, subsidizing, subsidizing the care. Right. There should be no reason why they just can't be so, taken so, care of. Uh, sorry for interrupting, Dr. If some of veterans says, I can't afford it, you, you that's not the no. That's not an issue. Yeah. The subsidy that is when we fund the clinic, there is enough money in there to pay for any copay or any cost that the clinic has. Yeah. Let me ask you. This is uh, less of a, a dental or oral health issue than it is more of a larger question of. Um, I'm not going to get overly philosophical, but what we owe our veterans. What do you think uh, we owe those who have given to our country? I think uh, it's very important to take care of our veterans. Uh, you know. Our community health center was, you know, started by volunteers, and uh, you know, our veterans volunteer to serve and protect us. And I That's think right. we, you know, yeah. we definitely. Uh, Go ahead, doctor. They took care of us. Now it's our turn to take care of them. When our chairman of the board, Dr. Deblinger, Ronald Deblinger, went up to Connecticut in 2015, he came back. He was inspired, and he set a goal: let's take care of our veterans in this state, and let's do it through our foundation, with. Partners. We finally looked around for two years. It took us to find a partner as good as them, and we, we couldn't find them. Finally, you found Zufall. Well, we knew about Zufall, but and they have great reputation. Great reputation, and uh, it took us two years to get together to figure this all out. So we're we're excited, very excited, because you know veterans are. We owe. We owe. We owe. Finally. 
I, I mean, I, I agree. I think, I hope this snowballs and this grows, but we want to, you know. Right. It's nine chairs, nine treatment rooms currently for this mm -hmm. current one. But next year, we want to increase the number of chairs so we can increase the number of care. Thank you so much, Gene uh, and Sam. We appreciate it. Well You're done. welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for We'll be right us. back right after this. To see more Caucus New Jersey with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, PhD. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Welcome to uh, an in-depth series we've been doing that's trying to make a difference in helping veterans across this state of New Jersey and, and the surrounding states. This is part of our Help for Our Heroes series. We're pleased to be joined by Tim Aurora, who is um, served as Sergeant, United States Marine Corps, he's a veteran, program coordinator of Operation Veterans to Social Workers at Family Connections. Good to see you, Tim. Good to see you too, Steve. Who are you joined with? Uh, That's my service dog, Brian. That's your service dog, Brian? Yes. Why does he matter? Uh, he matters because I'm a disabled veteran and he assists me with injuries I sustained overseas. Talk about the work you do every day to help veterans. So the work we do is primarily providing individual counseling, couples counseling, uh, group counseling, and um, sometimes family counseling when it's needed um, with the child as well. And it's a free service that we offer to veterans, performed by veterans. How do people find you? Uh, typically it's referral by word of mouth, but we also do a very active uh, community engagement process, either by participating in stakeholder meetings or by meeting with other programs within the community. And usually it's a referral through something that maybe we could feel that their program can offer. By the way, your website, is up as we talk right now. Yes. Is there a geographic area you serve? We serve pretty much anyone um, who is in the North Jersey area or even South or Central Jersey. If, they're, if they want to come in for counseling, we have an open door policy for that. So, You know, one of the things that came up, we had a round table discussion with Tim and a group of other advocates, experts, government officials, people from the foundation community talking about um, how to help those who are in fact heroes who have given so much to our country. And one of the issues that kept coming up, Tim, and you were part of that discussion, is that sometimes it's hard to get veterans to A, reach out, B, once they do, to be open. Talk about it. So a lot of times from what I experienced just as a service member and also as a veteran when I uh, was um, taken out of service was that there is a stigma um, in terms of mental health, almost as you don't want to be that person that goes and opens up about your service. Because? Uh, typically, it's frowned upon within the community, or at least when I was in, but since it started to open up a little bit. So what we do is we create a very empathic and compassionate environment to where we can talk about any subject. And those subjects can relate from anxiety, depression, uh, marital issues, PTSD, and military sexual trauma. Is it different for men versus women from your experience? Uh, sometimes it could be very different. Sometimes the, the issues can be very similar. So if they're struggling with employment issues or holding a job um, and about anxieties at that job, which may prevent them from keeping it, then that can overlap into both categories. Why, how is it different, though, or when and under what circumstances would it be different for men versus women? In terms of general counseling or yeah. in uh, employment? Uh, for the differences, let's say a male client was exposed to combat, and maybe this is the first time they're discussing about their traumatic situations. So that may be something for men, whereas for women, it could relate to military sexual trauma. Why, do I, why is that coming up so much, that, ver that such a high percentage of women who serve in the military dealt with such trauma? I believe a lot of it was kind of um, kept under wraps, so to speak. So a lot of people were afraid to mention it while they're in service because of uh, retaliatory efforts from higher-ups who committed Part of the military culture? Probably part of military culture. Um, I would at least attribute to that of keeping quiet and there could be retaliatory action taking place if spoken up against. Um, so a lot of people are kind of ashamed to bring it up from what I saw mm. or afraid to bring it up and it's attributed to a very painful part of their past. So a lot of them really don't want to bring it up and put themselves in a vulnerable situation. But that's something that we hope will um, happen within session. We like to empower our client to be able to open up and talk about these subjects. Someone watching right now, mm -hmm. man, woman, served uh, our country looking for help, what should they do right now? Uh, they could call us. That'd be one of the greatest things to do. If you're in the area, 
we could definitely you know, get you in as fast as we can to see someone and hopefully start that process. Who are they process. seeing on the other end? Uh, a veteran, which is something that a lot of vets have vocalized that they want to talk to other veterans. So our staff is master's level students, um, currently either in Rutgers University, Monmouth University, mm -hmm. Kane University, or Fordham University. And those students are performing the actual counseling work. That so, matters? Oh, it matters a great deal. Why? Because they have the cultural competency, they're present, to actually address the issues with those veterans. So not only have they been in the exact same situation in terms of the employment factor, being in the military, but a lot of times their experiences will overlap, unfortunately and fortunately. Final question. Yes. I've asked several of your colleagues who are joining us today here at the Healthcare Foundation this question. Why do you do what you do every day? I do what I do every day because I myself am a disabled combat vet. And I knew the struggles of looking for adequate services when I got out of service, even when I was in service. Well, that was you. Why, why step up for others? Because it shows that you're a leader and even that you can accomplish these things by getting the services that you need and that you too can have a, can have a successful life. And look at those uh, troublesome things that maybe you don't want to look at in yourself or the past things that occurred and challenge yourself to move forward from that and get the help that you need. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. To see more Caucus New Jersey with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We're pleased to welcome Dr. Gwendolyn Mahan, Dean and Professor at Rutgers School of Health Professions. Good to see you, Doctor. Delighted to be here, Steve. Describe yeah. the school. So, uh, so we have a very exciting school. Um, our school is one of eight schools at Rutgers Biomedical Health Sciences, which is really a new entity that used to be UMDNJ. We joined with Rutgers, and it's very exciting because we're, we're growing, and schools that were at Rutgers focused on health were able to join us as well. So our school, I think, is, is probably the most unique of the schools in that we don't offer just one program or curriculum. We actually offer 50 programs, as mind-boggling right. as that may be, all focused on the health sciences. And so as the name suggests, we educate health professionals. Um, I that think, includes? And so that includes, and I won't go into all of them because it's a lot, but to give you the general. The most significant ones. The on. most significant ones in rehabilitation, so physical therapy, occupational therapy, nutrition and dietetics, imaging sciences, so the people that do sonography and nuclear medicine. Really the best way to think about it, and it's interesting, we're kind of defined by what we're not than, than what we are in many right. ways. And what we are is really a significant portion of the healthcare team. So if you look at the work, healthcare workforce, we make up about 80% of the saying, workforce. Wait, they, is this what people call, quote, allied, allied health, health professionals? Absolutely, allied health, allied health ahead, professionals, sorry. absolutely. And so really we're the members of the healthcare team other than the physician, the dentist, the nurse, and the pharmacist. So that's kind of the best way to think about right. it. So you think about as a patient the different people that you interact with as part of the healthcare, healthcare it's team. so interesting. Um, people think of healthcare. Well, well, let me ask you this. Yeah. The ACA. Yes. The Affordable Care Act. Absolutely, yeah. How is it connected to this conversation? It's very much connected. So if you think about how healthcare has been mm -hmm. um, and, and where we are in the United States today, and then the changes that have come with the Affordable Care Act actually have a very big impact on our profession. How so? They play a big role. So we're moving from uh, care that is very much based on fee procedure-based reimbursement um, and moving towards quality-based reimbursement. And what that means is uh, thinking about the outcomes, so the patient outcomes, rather than the procedures that took place. So I'll, I'll give you an example sure. that might maybe uh, you know, explain this a little bit better. So think about someone going in for surgery. Um, re the reimbursement has always been you know, for the surg surgery itself, for the different care that made procedures that took place. Fee for service. Fee for service. In the future, and this is very costly, and we have a problem in the country with the cost of health care, but we also have a problem with the quality of health care. Um, so the idea with the Affordable Care Act was to change how we reimburse and how we think about 
reimbursing and care, change the model so that we can reduce costs and improve quality. But what does that have to do with the allied professionals? So what that has to do with it, rather than it being fee-based, if it's based on outcomes, you need to make sure that that person, when they come out of that surgery, that they're going to have good outcomes. So how do you do that? You prepare them ahead of time. So not just rehabilitation mm -hmm. after, where you might have gone for physical therapy, but you do what's called prehab. So before prehab, the person, prehab. Not the rehab not after. The rehab well, after. the rehab after, after which is important as well. As well. But prehab? But you're prehab. So you're preparing somebody before they go How in for surgery. How would you prepare surgery? for surgery? You do the exercises that maybe you were going to do before going in. You build up muscle strength. Let's say you're going to have a knee surgery. Build up that muscle strength before you go in so your recovery is going to be better. Meet with a dietitian. Let's start working on that diet now. Meet with a behavioral counselor. Let's talk about your lifestyle and what you're doing and how we can get you healthy now so that when you come out from the surgery, your outcomes are going to be better. So it's proactive instead of reactive. And by the way, these allied health professionals we're talking about, everyone outside of medical professional you know doctors right nurses and dentists and you dentists said, right are they less costly they are less costly Talk and that's that. the other 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 side <clears throat> of it so what you then do is you have an integrated team of professionals where the overall cost um, associated with the work of those professionals as compared to a procedure based reimbursement of a physician um, that may you know doing the surgery you have prepared patients at a lower cost for better outcomes. So maybe you don't have readmissions later that are going to be expensive. Maybe the person doesn't have to go back for a second surgery. Uh, maybe they don't have other complications that they may have mm -hmm. had. So the overall cost of the care goes down because people are healthier. So the, really the idea is much more preventive and preemptive and having um, a whole integrated care with professionals that are focused on different areas um, of that patient's lifestyle and health. If, let me ask you this. Yeah. Do we have a sense of the profile, the demographics? I don't want to generalize, but the kinds of students you're attracting? Absolutely. So it's one of the things I really love about our school, and I obviously am very excited about our school overall. So we have students, um, first of all, in terms of age, ranging from high school to 65. So when we had our convocation right? last year, we had several people above 60 years old graduating. So what we do at our school is, and if you think about the healthcare team, we're talking about a lot of different individuals. There's entry level positions um, where somebody can you know, have an education for about two years and be able to enter right into a profession, and then career ladder and do advanced practice later. Um, so it offers a lot of opportunities in terms of workforce, in terms of jobs, we have 100% job placement. If you think oh, about oh, back up, I'm sorry, 100% job, job placement. Job placement. I, I was just about to ask yes. you what are some of the challenges <laughs> finding work. And we don't have challenges. So Why now, of is course, that? well, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, think about our population. Um, we are an aging population. It is predicted that by 2030, a fifth of the population is going to be over 65. We have a lot of issues with chronic health conditions. Right. This is a low-cost way of providing care. There's a need for these types of professionals, um, and there's a shortage. And the other, what we do at our school, we admit only to placement. So we always make sure that whoever, whatever students we are admitting, the number that we're admitting, we track our outcomes, we track how, where our students are placed, and we, we move and change very quickly with healthcare changes, and new professions come open, we adapt mm. to that. So, and that's why we have so many professions as well, because we're looking right from the entry level to the advanced Last practice. question I have for you. Yeah. I want to make sure we have time for this. Jackie, is this uh, how much time we have? Um, I'm curious about this. There are some folks who continue to talk about repealing, replacing, messing around with, doing away with something with the ACA. Since we don't know what that would or could be, what concerns do you have about the impact on these allied health professionals? Oh, absolutely. So I think the ACA, and I think there's, it's a start. You know, there's a way to go. We still have a lot to do, but it really moved things in the right direction. The whole basis of this idea of reimbursement changing right. from fee-based over allows these health professionals to really play a much bigger role, which in the end means healthier people. Because mm -hmm. these are the individuals that are working more on the continuum of care, looking at prevention, looking at diet and lifestyle and exercise, which we all know when it comes down to it, a lot of our health uh, has, to do with, has to do with that. Real quick, last question. Yeah. The number one thing you want your students to walk away from your school with, oh. beyond the skills and tools, right. what is so it? So obviously the competency. You know, we want our right. students to be very competent. Um, there's two things. Real quick, 30 um, yeah, seconds. So, okay, so one of them is how to work as a team. 
how to be respectful of other members of a team. So we spend a lot of time with our students uh, learning how to work as a team. Um, and the other is compassion. Um, and that those two things, I think, are just at the center of what we do. And also being a good communicator, which you are. Yes. <laughs> and I want to thank you, Dr. Gwendolyn Mahan, Dean and Professor of the Rutgers School of Health Professions, playing a more important role than ever before in our health care. Thank you so thank much, you, Doctor. Steve. Well done. Thank you. Okay, good. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, Seton Hall University, Suez, Summit Medical Group, Choose New Jersey, Verizon, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. Highly educated and perfectly located in the heart of the Northeast Corridor, New Jersey provides access to top talent and one of the most concentrated and diverse consumer markets in the world. A business located in central New Jersey has access to more than 22 million consumers within a two-hour drive. Whether it's our strategic location, transportation systems, reliable utilities, or talented workforce, New Jersey has all you need to grow your business. To learn more, visit ChooseNJ.com.